everybody. <laughs> so, as I swim back across the Nile River, I look up and I can hardly believe what I see. Cows are grazing, kingfishers are hovering, but the part that makes me smile and takes my breath away is the fact that 21 of my Stanley students are there in the village where I used to live in 2013 and 2014 in Uganda, mingled into the scene like they belong. They sit with their new Ugandan friends, brushing each other's hair, washing each other's feet, strumming ukulele, playing tag, swimming in the river, fishing, and having conversations. And as I step back onto the banks, I tiptoe around and eavesdrop on what they're saying to each other. And I'm gonna let you eavesdrop too, because um, <laughs> I have a clip that last year, seventh and eighth graders, Jack and Jay and Griffin, recorded with their new friend in Uganda. I am very sure there's so many people out there who are like this. Like they have something about Africa in their head. And they're, yeah. they're always very nervous to make a step. I think it's been cool to see like how great it's been here in Uganda. Wow. And how um, like wrong everyone is, I guess. You know, like I don't wow. know. Yeah. I don't no. know. Wow. Definitely. I, I like, feel like I don't know. Like, it's just safe and calm. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I, I feel I feel much safer here than I do in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Wow, and it wow. seems so homey. It seems like everyone like I know each other. Like everyone's so friendly. Like, everyone like when we're walking to Malawi, everyone's like hi. Everyone's just hi. Okay. Wow. Like, <laughs> so those voices belong to Jack and Jay and Griffin, and they were interviewing Uganda. Just so put faces to the, to the voices. Um, but let me zoom out and back up for a second. How did I get here? because in the same way that the Ugandan Nile holds a very special place in my heart, the other place that could very well be, like that was being tied to that place, could very well be represented by this ballroom. Maybe the clicker will work. Maybe it won't. Josh, can you help me out? Thanks. Okay. Um, when I was in eighth grade, I played Juliet, right around this area right here. Um, when we didn't have any lights or mics or anything. It was very raw. There was just that spotlight, which still exists, by the way. Um, <laughs> and I now direct Shakespeare in here every year. When I was in middle school, I wrote a play parodying the personalities of my teachers, and I played the role of none, of none other than David Murray wielding his ruthless red pen. <laughs> a man who would later become my co-teacher, colleague, friend, and Spirit of Stanley honoree tonight. I have held hands with Lanita Jones, both as a child and as an adult, singing We Shall Overcome during Martin Luther King assemblies on this stage, in this space. And now this is my classroom, you are in it. I direct five plays a year in here. In fact, behind the curtains, don't pull them back because you will find props for our seventh grade one act play festival next Wednesday. I, have, I teach kids how to sit in that tech, bo tech booth and operate these microphones. We write scripts together, like Conrad, who's in the audience somewhere, and we dissect the inner machinery of comedy. And then, finally, I step back, breathless, and watch them as they put on wigs or mustaches or petticoats, and they proclaim that they have a story to tell, confidently. So I have been so lucky to, been, to have been a part of a number of incredible, tightly knit communities. And my dad would say that that is absolutely Stanley's fault because when I was five, BPS was the first community that I was a part of and it has probably served as a template for the rest of them. When I graduated eighth grade, I put in a decade of education and acting and singing and dancing and a job as a counselor and then put me in 2009 and I come back to do the intern program here and then accept a job teaching third, fourth and fifth grade which I loved for three years and I took because I would be able to collaborate and create with other incredible teachers. And then in the summer, after three years of teaching, in the summer of 2012, I, my band and I decided to go on tour to the country of Togo, West Africa, which is a tiny little country about the size of New Hampshire, western coast, and incredibly renowned for its music. And I go there, I'm in total heaven. I'm speaking French and Eve every day. I'm playing music eight hours a day and concerts at night. 
I'm completely in love with this other community. That so much so that six months later on my winter vacation, I go back, but this time by myself as a solo artist, working with friends that I had made in Togo and playing concerts every night. And I'm gonna show you just a little bit. This video is of me learning a dance with my friend Weddy in Burkina. so much time in West Africa, it was the role that I was playing, which was one of a musician, like a musician, a learner, and definitely what Stanley would call a joyful lifelong learner, for sure. Um, so I came back after my winter vacation, and I was back for two weeks teaching, and suddenly I got a job offer through a random twist of fate um, to go way across the continent, not in Togo or Burkina, but in Uganda. And I took the job offer. I told Stanley I would not be coming back to teach 345, and... Um, when I got there, the job turned out to be something much different from what I expected. It was a completely different role from being a musician and a student, and it said I was hired as a manager of a nonprofit, focused on a bunch of different educational initiatives. And I completely fell in love with the community again. This is Mama Ali's family, where I lived the entire time I was there. I learned how to speak Lusoga, and I loved it, but I also felt that the job was problematically rooted in patterns of colonialism and racism. It was subtle, but it was becoming not so subtle to me. And you know, who was I to come into this place where I had not grown up, I didn't know the history, and be a manager of anybody? And maybe it's because of Stanley that I am as resistant of hierarchy as I am. <laughs> um, and maybe it's because Stanley showed me that a community is supposed to be a bunch of equal shareholders and not a privileged small group of people telling a large group of people what to do. But I started completely ignoring my job description. Instead, I became a buffer between my American boss and my Ugandan colleagues. I asked a lot of questions and listened and tried to help people get the resources they needed that they thought were necessary for their community. But eventually, I could not sustain working for this organization that was based on that kind of a power discrepancy. And I knew that the next time I came back, because I was absolutely coming back, was going to be much more humbly so I came back and finished my master's degree in ed psych. And Stanley let me know that there was a position opened up for th teaching third, fourth, and fifth grade. And I wasn't sure until I heard that the drama position was open. And I was like, yes, that's what I want. So I came back and co-taught a homeroom with David and spent the rest of the time in this space with a bunch of other incredible teachers, some of whom are in the room, <laughs> um, directing plays in here and teaching drama classes, which was awesome. And then in 2016, I convinced 13 families, again, some of them were in the room, Lucas, I saw you walk in, um, to, con to send their kids halfway around the world. I don't know how I did it, but, and three incredible teachers to come along. And we spent months preparing. We looked at how the entire age of middle school and the entire continent of Africa is completely misportrayed in the media with, com with unfair stereotypes. We interviewed each other, we, tried, we learned a little bit of Lasoga, and finally, we got to Uganda, we showed up. And this is a picture of Cora in the East Angel shirt with her friends that she's interviewing. Um, and my students were able to push aside all of the Disney movies and 
the news stories and what somebody told them once about Africa and just sit and have conversations and be face to face with a community that I love so much and is so complicated. Um, and this trip has continued for three years and hopefully will go on in the future after I have a baby. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's really hard for me to untangle the thousands of ways that Stanley has touched my life. Obviously, I've had it much more intricately woven in as I come in and go out and come back again. Um, but the heart of it for me has really been about community. Being part of a tightly knit, intentional group of people who feel valued and known by each other has been the only way that I've achieved anything, whether that is building a classroom community or directing a play or uprooting ideas of racism and replacing them with actual intimate experience or bringing two halves of my heart from across the world and watching them fit together. Thank you.